Okay. And welcome to my first video in a three-part series of videos looking at resolving forces of objects on inclined planes. Now, the reason we have to resolve forces is because we need to work out, if we're looking at an object's motion, we have to consider its for, the components of its forces that are right angles to each other. So we need to look at the forces that are parallel to the, to the potential or the actual direction of motion and perpendicular to it. Now, if force is perpendicular to it, we tend to be interested in, in terms of friction, which I'll look at in a subsequent series of videos. But to start off with, we're going to be looking at trying to work out those forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane, so that we can then consider, it, consider its motion. So to start off with, we've got a mass of m kilograms resting on a plane that's inclined to alpha degrees to the horizontal. Um, and we want to work out what forces are acting on that block parallel and perpendicular to the plane because that block is going to be moving either up or down the, the plane depending on what other forces are are acting on it or have been acting on it because it may have been projected up or projected down it. Um, so let's consider that for a moment. We've got a block on a plane um, where it's got weight, definitely. Um, and it's not falling through the plane, so it must be a normal reaction force acting between the plane and the block. So my first move would always be to go immediately to a free body diagram, or a force diagram, depending on what your teacher wants to call it. And I'll do that by putting in a dashed line to represent the plane. Massively not to scale. Now, we're looking at this in terms of M1, really. So we're going to treat our body as a particle. Okay, we don't need to worry about centers of mass until M2 and M3. And then we need to consider what forces are acting on it. Well, we've got its weight acting down. Now, you notice the weight is not gravity. Gravity is not a force. It's a phenomena. The force acting on it is weight due to gravity. And as I said earlier, it particles are not passing through the plane, so it must be a normal reaction force stopping it from falling through the plane. Which I'm going to label R. Ah, a plane can only exert a force normal to its surface. Now, the astute amongst you will have noticed that those forces are not at right angles to each other. Because they're not at right angles to each other, it's going to make doing the maths of working out an object's um, acceleration is up and down the slope, rather complicated. So all we need to do is make those forces perpendicular to each other. And here we have a choice. We can either resolve parallel and perpendicular to the plane, or we can resolve vertically and horizontally. Both methods would work. However, if we resolve vertically and horizontally, we're going to end up with a fairly unpleasant system of simultaneous equations, regardless of whether we're trying to work, whenever we're trying to work out any force. Or if we go parallel and perpendicular to the plane, we're going to reduce the number of simultaneous equations we have to solve, and we're going to make those that we do have to solve somewhat nicer to work with. So we're going to look at them parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So forces perpendicular to the plane. Well, because the normal reaction is already perpendicular to it. That was easy. And then we need to consider the weight. Well, it's going to have two components. It's going to have a component acting into the plane. Because otherwise, the normal reaction force would make it leap off. And since that would be magic, that's not allowed to happen. We're also going to have a component acting parallel to the plane. Now, I'm assuming most of you have at some point fallen down a hill. So from that, hopefully you realise that the component of this force, parallel to the plane, is going to be acting down it. And we're going to look at the mathematics of why that is momentarily. So we need to work out the magnitude of these two forces. We need to work out the magnitude of this beastie, the one acting perpendicular to the plane. And we'll need to do that in order to be able to work out the reaction force. Um, if this is a smooth plane, probably not particularly significant. However, at some point, you will have to work out, uh, work out frictions, for, uh, the frictional forces or coefficients of friction. The other force we're going to need to work out is this force here. 
a force parallel to the plane. So this is effectively a force that's causing motion or trying to stop motion. So we need to look at those. And the way we'll consider those is by considering our weight in isolation. So we are going to ignore the normal reaction force. So let's get rid of that. And let's consider our mg. Now our mg is can be broken up into a component parallel to this to our inclined plane and a component perpendicular to our inclined plane. And that's, that's going to involve a vector addition. So effectively, our component perpendicular to the plane is a vector acting at right angles to the plane. And to that, we're going to have to add another vector that is parallel to the plane in order to get to the end of our of our um, weight. Now, vector addition, how is it right angles to each other because they're perpendicular and parallel to the plane. So if we want to work them out, we've got, we know how long the hypotenuse is, it's mg. So all we need now is an angle and our GCSE trigonometry will tell us how long these two, how, will tell us the magnitudes of these two forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So we know this angle between the plane and the horizontal is alpha. Since my weight is perpendicular to the, to the horizontal, this angle here must be a right angle. Since that's a right angle, the angle between the weight and the plane, the acute angle between the weight and the plane, must be 90 minus alpha. Now, my blue force is perpendicular to the plane. So that means that my 90 minus alpha plus the angle between the weight and the force perpendicular to the plane must be a right angle. So, my little angle in here must be 90 minus 90 minus alpha, leaving us with alpha decrease. Okay, so we know the angle between the magnitude of the weight, mg, and the force perpendicular to the plane. So now we're in and the force pa um, parallel to the plane. So let's start off with look, working at force perpendicular to the plane. So we know from GCSE that cosine of alpha is going to be uh, force perpendicular to the plane, call it perp force, divided by mg. So it means our perp force is going to be mg cos alpha. mg cos alpha. And similarly, sine alpha is going to be our parallel force divided by mg. So our parallel force is going to be mg sine alpha. So we can label that up. mg sine alpha. Now, hopefully you agree with me, this has become a bit of a mess. So let's go back to our earlier diagrams and label them up because they're somewhat clearer. So these are swift. Our force is perpendicular to the plane being R acting out of the plane and mg cos alpha acting into the plane and mg sine alpha acting parallel to the plane. And assuming we're always given the angle between the horizontal and the plane, this will always be the case. The weight perpendicular to the surface will always be mg cos alpha, and the weight parallel to the surface will always be mg sine alpha. Okay, if we're given the angle per, um, between the plane and the vertical, then the sines and the cosines will swap around. 
Okay, so we then, would then be in a position to go through, work out our normal reaction force, work out our forces pa um, parallel to the um, surface, and from that, solve any problems involving motion. In my next video, I'm going to look at a very similar situation, but this time we're going to add a force pushing the block into the inclined plane, but not perpendicular to the inclined plane. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Um, feel free to subscribe.